Hi, good afternoon, everybody. This is Justin Brissett, the host of the Dog Pound podcast. Uh, today, I have two special guests on. One was a former UConn football player, Pete Callen, and the other one is a 2024 running back uh, commit uh, for UConn, uh, Oliver Lundberg Coleman. How are you doing, guys? Doing well, Justin. How are you doing? Good, good. It's a it's a it's a beautiful day, and uh, and hopefully you know we we can we can get some great answers from you, Oliver, and uh, hopefully Pete can ask some great questions for you too. Sir. Sure. All right. So so uh, Oliver, can you tell UConn Nation a little about about yourself? Uh, sir, uh, my name is Oliver Lambert uh, Coleman. I'm growing up in Sweden. And I started playing football when I was 11. Yeah, when I was 11 years old. And I started off as a corner, and then I played the D line, <laughs> and then I played Mike. And then I was 15, I started playing running back. I just kept on going from there. And yeah, I went to the school called RIG Academy. That's like an academy we got in here in Sweden. Uh, where they develop football players and get them ready for college. Very yeah. cool. Very cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, and now like like Rig Academy is that like close to like uh, in in America we have IMG Academy and all those like you know bigger schools or mm-hmm. exactly exactly I had to move away from home. It's like five hours away from my home city Gothenburg. It's in Uppsala, so I had to move there when I was 17 or 16. I was about to turn 17, and, and I had to move there. And this, you live at the school in dorms, and you go up every, every morning, 6 o'clock in the morning, and do workouts for two hours every day. And then you go to school, and then you just grind after school, and then we play like teams from all over Europe, like the best competition used to get better. Mm-hmm. Uh, playing against NFL Academy, a very good academy that is sponsored by the NFL. Uh, they got a bunch of D1 commits and also like a team in France and teams in Germany. So it's a good academy. We play against like good competition and you get better as a person and you use, yeah, it's a good academy. Awesome. That's pretty cool. Huh? It, I'm, I'm glad to hear about that. I'm sure everybody else is, uh, you know, more aware about the uh, RIG Academy. Um, so uh, what 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 made you choose to commit to, to UConn? I was actually very curious about that. Uh, mm, yeah, uh, what made me choose UConn? I think, like, when I came there and I, like, I got the offer uh, on the New England camp. I, I think it was a camp in New England. And I, I didn't know I was going to go there before I went on a visit. Because when I went on a visit, like, the, I used to love the facilities. And I really liked the running back coach, Antonio Wilcox, and mm-hmm. the whole staff. Like, they was very... Uh, very good coaches, everybody, and I just loved everything about it, like how they work and how, the good connection they got with their players. So yeah, I that's... felt like a, it felt like home over there. Mm-hmm. It's, it's hard to describe, but it just felt like home. Yeah, no, I, I don't blame you. I used to go so, uh, to UConn football. I think football that was the reason camp, why so. it felt like home, and yeah. the yeah. coaches got a good connection with the players. That's awesome. I'm I'm glad to hear well, that. Uh, that's that's what shows you, Tom. Awesome. So, uh, another question too. Uh, what impressed you? I oh, actually know what you kind of answered that okay. question. Uh, what was the recruiting process like for you? you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. I, I hear it now. The con- the connection uh, went a little bit. Okay. Uh, what was good. the recruiting process like for you? The recruiting process. Uh, so I was co- like last year. I was committed to West Kentucky. Like 
my whole recruiting process was like this. Uh, we got this organization called PPI Recruits. Uh, and Brandon Collier is the host of that. And he, he like brings the best athletes and best players from Europe and brings them to camps and promote us and talks to coaches about us and helps us. So last year I went on a tour, like a tour, yes, every year. And I mm-hmm. collected an offer from uh, uh, West Kentucky, and I was committed. But then uh, I didn't, I didn't go there. Uh, so I went on a, another tour the next year here, and now like twenty twenty three, uh, and I I went to all these camps. I think I did twenty camps in one month. Wow. So yeah, so I just kept on grinding, and then I got a. Uh, I got an offer from UMass, and then I got an offer from Campo. And then I think the last day I was in the U.S., my last camp in New England, I got the offer from uh, uh, UConn. So it was, but before that, it was just me going on Twitter, posting my videos, and try to prove to these coaches that I was legit, that I could ball for real. And, uh, competition here in Europe is actually solid. So it was me going on Twitter and then I had to go in his camps. So it was a long process. No, that's pretty cool. I mean, yeah, it's it's probably very strenuous on you, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> um sorry everybody too for the uh freezing up. Uh I forgot to turn on my Wi Fi, but now it should be better. <laughs> So uh, thank you for uh, answering my questions. I'm gonna uh, bring Pete on uh, now, and uh, he's gonna an- he's gonna ask you some uh, some of his questions that he has for you. Mm-hmm. All right, mm-hmm. go ahead. Well, Pete. you know, Ali, you know, you know, having played this game and coached this game, <laughs> and that you know, with my day job, sometimes mm-hmm. incurring other Europeans, you know, mm-hmm. when I tell them I played American football, the first thing that comes out of their mouth is, "Oh man, that's crazy. That's a crazy game." <laughs> um, how did you end up interested in playing football? Uh, what what made you gain interest in the sport? And uh, what's your what's your familial and you know friend friendships and, and your friend support been like since you've been engaged with this game? Being a European, being from Sweden. Uh, yeah. To begin with, how I came into it, uh, like I played every sport without basketball, but I played. I went. I, I ran track. I played soccer, and I played like floorball. I played hockey. And I did gymnastics. I did everything, but nothing. I didn't get stuck in any sport. Like I didn't find in love with a sport. But I, I always watched like the NFL on the TV, and I just loved it. And I just, I, used, I, I know I used, I, I liked something with a sport. So I looked it up, uh, if it was any teams here in my town or even my country, and I found out they had uh, this team, Gothenburg Marvels. So I just signed up and went to a practice, and I used to hear coaches screaming everywhere, and it was players hitting everybody. And I think we did Oklahoma the first practice, and I used to run over the DT on the team, and that's when I got in love with the sport. When I ran over him, so that's how I came into it. And my best friend, uh, Thomas Collins, like he lives next door, and he he's American, and he always talked about American football. So me and him, uh, we started playing at the same time, and we both went to the academy uh, that I went to, and he's in Oregon State right now. So we've been supporting each other the whole way, and. Uh, is grinding together, going to the gym together, putting in that extra work. So I've been having a lot of support by him. So besides the contact, what about the game? What about the game before you started playing attracted you? And then when you started playing, what did you find the same or up to your expectations? What did you find different? What did you find that was even more interesting than you originally thought when you started playing American football? Uh, it's difference and everything. I think that was like the team building and like the connection the team gotta have. Because I've never been in a sport when like your teammates feel like your brothers. 
Like it's, mm. it was a different thing when I came to play American football because you got to trust trust everybody on that field because it ain't uh, a one man sport. You, everybody gonna be on points to win a game, and everybody got to do the right, do the right thing on a play to win. So mm. the connection with the teammates that was different. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, I had I had played U- at UConn a long time ago, but I still had I had invites myself to play professionally in Sweden, which I declined because I wanted to finish my degree. But I did have some teammates play in Sweden professionally, um, including one that met, actually met his future wife there. Mm-hmm. And he lives in Florida now. So how how engaged is um, football in the culture there uh in professional professionally speaking i mean how much involvement is is there over there in terms of the general population in your country Mm, like it is kind of big but it ain't like the biggest sports here is hockey and soccer but i think it's growing a lot like i think back in a yes eight years ago it was big like it was on tv and everywhere but it went down a little bit, but now it's growing because everybody see these guys like going to the U.S. and playing Division One from my country, mm-hmm. and it's just getting bigger. And we got a, we got a like a, a a series called the Super Series, and that's like a prof- like almost professional series, uh, where like Americans can come and play, and other imports. We bring guys from all over Europe just in one like division and uh, yeah like it's the best of the best so it's we got one professional league over here okay. uh yeah and i i played in it last year like yeah, i played in it last year used to get the good competition so i played along like all the division one commits and uh, professional old professional players used to get the good like competition okay um, I, you know, I haven't coached, um, for 20 years. Like I coached your position at the D2 level here. Mm-hmm. I always was interested in my players, you know, what attracts you. I know what got you to trying to kind of explain your story about how, what, how you got to being a running back, but what attracts you now about running, being a running back? What do you like about the position the most? It could be very, very versatile. Like you can. Like you gotta be good at everything. You gotta be fast. You gotta be strong. You gotta be explosive. And I think, I think I, I used, what attracts me now the most, I think, is just a different feeling when you get the ball in your hands and you're just getting the like you gotta read your O line and kids to run through the hole and you get first downs, get touchdowns. It's just a different feeling running the ball. So, but I mean, yeah, I used to love the position. I used to love the position. It's hard to explain, but it's just when you carry the rock, it's different. Absolutely. And they're different versatile, versatility types of players. Some people are very shifty, have mm-hmm. a, a lot of agility, like to no fake and what I call clown defenders. Others like to run through them. You know, what's mm-hmm. you, what's your what do you like doing? What 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 most you you like doing most about you know carrying? Uh, I think I'm kind of balanced. Like I like I like running over people. I also like taking people's ankles and stuff. But what I like is just reading the old line good and snatch ankles and just be productive. That's what I like to do. Just be productive and be all around good. That's like. Right. Go ahead. Jason. So you kind of like a Cam Edwards then? Ah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, you know, being a former coach, I like several things about your play. You're decisive when you make your cuts and you do so explosively. You know, you, when moving toward your aiming points, you attack holes and accelerate through the holes well. I mean, and when you're attacked, you, you know, you don't die easy. Uh, I love that about mm-hmm. running backs. And the one other thing that I, I see that you, you kind of do instinctively is you put your whole body through half of a defender when conflicted one-on-one. It's not always 
that's kind of a lost art, I feel, with running backs um, in, in facing contact, particularly with all the concerns recently with the head injuries and stuff. People just don't take people on as much, but you seem to do so and relish it. Um, did anyone teach you these things or did you, you know, come about with on these parts of your game on your own? Yeah. Uh, like on Academy, my, my head coach, uh, Robert Johansson, like he, like he knows every position. Like he, he knows how to teach like coach O-line receivers and everybody. And uh, like, he teach me a lot of things like how to do a jump cut. How like what a aiming point is, and and where you should attack when you're one v one against a defender. Like attack his half body, and like he teach me the like the easiest things. Like the yeah, he teach me the easiest things. But when I went to the U.S. and all these camps, like that's when I got the next level stuff. Uh, that's when I learned like. The other stuff like uh, cuts, uh, like doing a jump cut on the next level, how to think, like, and stuff like that, how to run a good option route and stuff. But yeah, my coach in Sweden, uh, he teach me a lot. That's okay. how I learned it. Have you read Fronts yet? You were starting to read Fronts yet? Be able to predict those holes in the zone, on the zone? Not um, yet. Not yet, not yet. Okay, that's the next level stuff. That's the next level stuff. Um, what parts of your game would you like to improve and you think will make you more ready for college level competition? I just gotta get a, yeah, it's hard. I, I think uh, being like used to the speed over there, I heard it's much, everything's much faster over there. So I just gotta, learn like get used to the speed so everything slows down for me and just listen to what a coach tells me and get better because i never had a real running back coach like that so i just gotta my first year i want to soak everything in and just learn as much as possible and just learn the things that i didn't learn here in sweden and take everything i can Okay. So here's one so, hit. Yeah. And get Ask faster one. and bigger, of course. Get faster and bigger. Get big, better stick farms and truck people freezer. better. You guys hear me? You guys hear me? So, yeah. Can you guys hear me? I hear yep, you. I can hear you. Okay. I made a joke and then everything froze. I didn't know. I didn't see if you guys laughed or not. <laughs> I didn't hear. I didn't ask. I said, here's one hint pass blocking. <laughs> yes. Uh, Yes. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. One yeah, thing that's very blocking. underrated that uh, everyone's got to learn to do better at the college level is pass blocking. So, yeah, you know, you'll be your your quarterback's best friend. You'll be the all line's best friend. You'll be everybody's best friend if you pass block. That's going to be one of the first things I would suggest. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What do you feel you can add to the team as a person and as a player? Uh, the person. I'll always be positive. Like I'm always gonna be positive and help my teammates go forward, even when it's hard. Just be a positive player and try to inspire players and just give them motivation. So I will have that motivation. I will always work hard. I will never stop. Uh, like I will never go easy on a day. I will always go hard. And as a football player. I'm gonna be the player that never gives up. I, I will always give my one thousand every play, every practice, every rep. That's what I'm gonna do, and always hype my teammates. Here's one question I have, just as from a coaching standpoint: Have you have you considered like um, other things, like you know, in relation to carrying the ball, special teams, like kick return, punt returns, um, adding that kind of skill set to your your repertoire? Yeah, yeah, like I, I've been like this year I only had four four kickoffs against me, like returns and I think it's a I took two to the house. So okay. yeah, I could add that because I'm kinda good at returning the ball. 
Okay. I guess one of my final questions, I might think up some more as the conversation moves along, but as a person, as a player, what are you hoping to receive from your experience at UConn? Uh, play play football, like, at the real level, like, in the U.S., because yeah, I think that's the one of the biggest things, because I never – I played football here, but it's not the same as in the U.S. because that's where the sport is from. So I never had, I never played like with a team that where everybody is good. Like I want to play with a good team, and also just the experience going to college, going to the college in the U.S. That's a big thing. Every, every European don't get a chance to do that. So college experience and being a football player in the U.S., playing Division One. Awesome. Okay. Definitely make sure you get that degree, my man. And that also, yeah, the D- degree, yeah. of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm blank right now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so um, Oliver, I have a good question for you, too. So mm-hmm. the presence of uh, the NFL in Europe uh, with, like, the London games and with the Germany games, mm-hmm. does that kind of help uh, make the sport a little more popular uh, in, in, in Europe or even out west? Yeah, I think so. I think so because in the London games, like, the stadiums, they're packed. And like before the games, they have this like small seven on sevens for kids. So if they like the sport, they might start playing it. So this is to help the growth of the game. Because if kids go there and they see the sport, like they will end up trying to play it. So it helps the growth a lot, I think. It's there in London, they're in Germany. So yeah, not in Sweden yet. I wish there was in Sweden, but. <laughs> Uh, huh. They're in the biggest countries in Europe, so I think they're doing a great thing over there. So it'll, it helps the growth. Yeah, definite, def, uh, definitely. It, it'll definitely grow. I mean, the the more the more European players that come over to America to play college, to even go to the NFL, I think that will just make it expand even more. Uh, so it, yeah. is, your, is your goal to get your degree and then go to NFL or play like USFL, uh, CFL? Yeah, the dream is always like get my degree and get to NFL. And if I, go, if I don't get to the NFL, maybe CFL or uh, – yeah, CFL or – even EFL, like they got this new started European football league. A lot of Americans come here, like Very cool. Division One players, former pros. So yeah, that's the goals. That's the biggest goals. Nice. I'm I'm glad to hear it. Uh, you you definitely seem like a bright kid. And uh, so so has Coach Wilcox. Um, has he talked what what you're gonna you know possibly do your first year at uh, UConn? What's the plans for you? Mm, we haven't talked about that yet, but he like we we've been talking a lot. We we got a good connection. Like uh, we haven't talked about what we're gonna do next year, but I, I think if I is putting in the work and. Like, look up to the good running backs, look to Rosa, Cam Edwards. I think I'll have a shot just to maybe see the field. Oh, definitely. Well, yes, sir. You know, one of the things, uh, one of the questions I, I came up with, you know, based on my experience, um, you, you there, Ali? Is he there, Justin? Uh, hey, Oliver, are you there? Might have lost him for a little bit. Okay. We'll wait for him to come back. All right. Definitely an engaging young man. Um, oh, yeah. Definitely looking forward to watching him on the field. Um, playing style is, you know, if anybody has a chance to check his uh, film out, it's quite impressive, especially being in Europe. Um, it looks like the competition he plays is pretty decent. Um, what were your thoughts on it, Justin? Yeah, I, I really, I really think that you know he he really wants to come in and 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 do his hardest. I mean, and 
I don't think he's I, I think he's the type of player too that he's just gonna come in and just, you know, ball out. I mean, he's gonna come to practice and he wants to prove himself. And he's definitely a bright man, um, bright young man and and he has a lot going for him. I, I, I feel like that's that's a good thing, uh, definitely going into, you know, the freshman year. Yeah. His running style, I don't know if everybody remembers this back, but his running style reminds me a lot of Sean Alexander. Here he is. Oh, yeah. Came back. We're there just talking about you. It's okay, man. You lost you a little bit. We're just trying to keep the show up. And I was just trying to make the comment that, um, you know, your running style, I don't know if you know this guy, uh, NFL backs, reminds me a lot of Sean Alexander. Sean Alexander. And from the Seahawks. He played in the mid-2000s. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know 37. So that's who you remind me of a little bit as a running back. Is there anybody that you kind of try to model your running style after? Before it was like Alvin Kamara, but he, he's so smooth with everything you do. Mm. Everything you do is so smooth. But now, Perseco uh, in uh, Kansas. Yeah, yeah, he's good. Yeah, he's that's, good. That's, I'm trying to be like him now. Explosive, yeah, running good. angry. He's from my part of the woods, south in southern New Jersey. So yeah, yeah, that that's that's part of the culture down there in football. You you play hard, you run hard. So I know exactly what you're talking about. That's a good guy to model yourself after. Um my 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 next question was, you know, having coached the position, um I know to get to next level kind of play, you have to know defenses. And sometimes the kids We'll, we'll know that through playing experience, other other ways that you'll get to know the game is through kind of virtual experiences like Madden and other video games. You know, what 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 little tools and what little things have helped you to learn more about the little intricacies of the game um, to give you a better understanding of, of how to play and, and um, you know, translate on the field? Uh, and I've been watching a lot of like, I've been watching a lot of college ball. I've been watching a lot of NFL. That's where I pick up the small things, but also Madden, because that's where you see like the whole blocking. But also, also my teammates. Like after school, when we was in the dorms, the only thing we did was just talking football. So I learned a lot of like football over there, like from just doing that, and also by game experience, because I played. Everywhere I played in the national team, the junior national team, the men's national team, club football, my academy. So that's a lot of football. So there's there I had a lot of coaches like teaching me like how to read defenses, what a free front is, what a four front is, uh, what a two two tech is, and stuff like that, and where to look and stuff. Like my coaches teach me a lot, and. Yeah, I think by my game experience and all my coaches, they teach, they teach me the most about, like, the game of football. So, so yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it looks like, you know, just watching you play, you know, unlike other other players that we kind of watch that are outside of the country or outside of the continent, you know, you definitely have a different feel for the game. It's different. It looks like you know how to play. Um, looks like you, you know, you attack things the way they're supposed to be attacked. And like you said, you know, once you get over here, it's about, you know, adjusting to the speed of the game and and um, getting your legs, so to speak, used to, you know, the waters over here and, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and taking off. So look forward to it, man. Yeah, sir, me, yeah, too, me too. too, me too. I'm looking yeah, forward yeah. to, uh, you know, if if when when you come over too, you're gonna have a lot of bright young men to help you out too. Uh, especially if you have any issues, uh, don't don't be scared to ask questions either, and sure. you know, come in and 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 do your thing. Because I know you can. You you seem like a you seem like a great you know young man, and you seem like you seem like a really angry runner, and that's that's what I love. <laughs> I love watching that man. I get thank so you. excited over that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> and you need more of them. You know, uh, specifically in the system, uh, the system seems to cater to running backs, and uh, it looks like you'd be a good fit. Very, thank you. Very, sir. Thank you very much. And, 
You're welcome. And and uh and and the one thing too is I posted something on Twitter the other day, which I wanted all all players coming in, all players on the team to see. You know, right. this year might have not been a a a, a year that you really want to remember but next mm-hmm. year coming in i want everybody to have chips on their shoulder you you come in and you you, you don't give up you don't mm-hmm. you, you don't ever want to give up you know even if you're down 14 you know that's the time mm-hmm. where you go and you smack guys around and you, you, you do your thing you know yes sir. And I, I i honestly think too we need we we definitely need more guys that that ha- that have your type of thought process too and i i think once that positivity comes in too, and that change comes in, we're definitely going to see a total change around, which, which I'm excited for. For sure. For sure. Yeah. I got a, I got a question. This is more on mm-hmm. the mental side of the game. Um, this takes a lot of American players by surprise, especially at the college level. Once they elevate, what are you going to do when you face someone on that field that by and large is, out to get you so bad and want to make your mama cry overseas like he's he's out to attack you i mean this is kind of like primal this is kind of some of the kind of the primal stuff you're going to run into on this field particularly as a running back carrying the rock you're going to be a target and some Mm -hmm. of these guys are going to come with very bad intentions what are you going to do to prepare yourself mentally physically to take on those challenges and maybe even yourself give some of that punishment back be honest, uh, like I'm kind of used to facing that, like here in Europe, because now when I like got a scholarship and stuff, everybody like on the field, they they're really trying to demolish me on the field to get a chance to also get a scholarship. So, like, what I'm gonna do is just run hard and not let anybody get into my head and use run hard and use. If he hits me, he gonna feel it. Like, even if I go down, he going to feel it because I'm going to go 2,000%. And I lower my shoulder and you hit him. So if they're trying to tackle me, they're going to feel it. Even if they make the tackle, they're going to feel it bad. So I love it. My my dad used to tell me, you're not going to win every battle, but whenever you engage in one, make that other person wish they never encountered you again. Yes, sir. That's the right mentality, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. You're definitely going to see a lot of that too, playing a lot of the P5 teams on the schedule. And they, those guys, Pete's definitely right. I mean, these guys are are out to get you, especially with you know all all the talks about football. You know, the first year Jim Moore was here. You know, it, we we had a team that, you know, a lot uh, there was a lot of coverage, and I think that kind of made a lot of teams kind of mad. Had chips are on their shoulder. You know, Pete and I talked about that, and uh, and you know, Pete came up with that, and I, I totally agree with him on that. <clears throat> yeah, mm-hmm. all the conference realignment talk. You know, we were a six win team coming off you know, you know, some pretty tough years, but we got a lot of press as a result, and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden, our little school was being considered being members of the Big Twelve, and I I honestly think. With all that talk, we were the most talked about six win team in the country before last season. And I think mm-hmm. all those group of five teams that maybe felt they had a better history, um, a better uh, resume, got really resentful and made a, made a point to play us mm-hmm. very, very hard and not only beat us, but beat us to the ground. And I think that yeah. was one thing that the whole team, you know, just being young, you know, mm-hmm maybe weren't ready for having that kind of a target on their back. I mean, it was a unique situation and, you know, people came with extra mustard and it wasn't just about us coming off of a bowl season. It was, yeah. it was us getting the national press we got. So I think that's going to continue. And it's going to try to continue. And, um, you know, as a result, you know, we're going to need some extra hard nosed players to, you know, they're going to know they're going to be hunted and they got to know and be prepared for what to do when they, when they come back next year. So yeah. that was my theory. That was my, my kind of my judgment. Everything went on at UConn. And yeah, that makes I sense. Mean, did you, did you hear a lot about that talk in your recruiting process and, you know, the kind mm-hmm. of conclusions that's come about now, mm-hmm. you know, now that everything's kind of settled down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I heard about going to big 12 and stuff. And yeah, yeah, I heard about that, and I also heard about yeah, I heard about last season when we got the wins and everything, and how Jim Morris started turning 
the program over and yeah that's what i heard yeah yeah that's the one thing i heard okay uh, i think you're coming into an, a, a good situation with a lot of people don't know about mm -hmm. our program despite all the hard years we had we had a lot of change over in university presidents six within a decade and a half you know for oh. ADs, it's kind of it was kind of hard to build something before mora came which i don't think a lot of people are aware of so you know having been a head coach at, you know even at the high school level here you, you cannot succeed without support at the administrative level and you know if that's in that kind oh. of flux then those are reasons why we went through the struggles we did but everything is solidified now we've we've done stuff in our history before to send you know people in the NFL to have big time bowl success um even with those years we we had and I researched this we had sent more draft picks to the NFL than about 60 percent of the big 12 and more okay. first and third round draft picks to the NFL than about 75 percent of the big 12 between 2009 and 2022 so you know you saw what we have in terms of facilities in terms of what how we you know can prepare players we've had mm -hmm. very good coaches strength and conditioning coaches so it's you know i can only imagine and justin's the same way you know what would happen if we we get our ball rolling and you know get some kind of level of success on the field how much more that's going to translate to success uh, that kind of success moving forward mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so, I actually, yeah. I, I still think too, looking at the 2024 class of this year uh, coming in, the commits that we have so far, uh, I think you guys are definitely going to be the turning point of this whole program. Uh, I, I feel like with you guys coming in too, this might be, you know, foundation is going to get stronger. And I, 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 I feel like Jim Mora, uh, you know, Antonio Wilcox, uh, Sammy's, all the coaches at UConn, are doing it the right way and i i i feel like yeah. you're, you're you're you definitely are coming into a good situation and uh i just want you to enjoy it man <clears throat> yeah yeah i'm getting excited excited very excited <laughs> have you been in communication with uh your fellow recruit teammates fellow classmates um uh, it's the recruiting process or not really not really oh, oh i've been talking to uh, Clement and uh, the other like European tight end, okay, uh, from Germany. So we, it's kind of cool having another European in your same like recruiting class and on the same okay. team. So that's that's kind of cool. And I'll, I also talked a little bit with Brooke, the the receiver, coming in. Okay. But, yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Those guys. No, it's awesome. pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So so. So it's it's kind of like off track, but it's like one of those questions I had for you. Uh, mm -hmm. If I came to Sweden tomorrow, where would I go for a really good meal? For very, yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, we got a lot of places here. Uh, got a lot of good food plate food places here, but I think it, it's kind of random. But I, I think our kebab pizza. That's the best uh, ever. Like it's a pizza, like here in Sweden. Like we, like you never thought pizza would be the best thing in Sweden, but we got the best kebab in a word, in my opinion. So you know, I will take you to a one of them pizza places. Oh heck yeah! If you like pizza, yeah. you found south of stores, about an hour and fifteen hour and half away, New Haven, they have some mm -hmm. of the best pizza in the world. Oh, and there's a specific street called Worcester Street that you have to go, mm -hmm. and they have Pepe's, Modern, Sally's, and a few others. But those are the big three. You have to have pizza there. They have they cook their pizza in ovens that are like over a hundred years old using coal ovens. So it's just like it's different. <laughs> it's just different. I grew up around Philadelphia, New York, and before my wife took me to Worcester Street, I thought she was crazy saying that that was the best pizza in the world until I tried it, and I was like. I was hooked. It was game over. Drop the mic. That was the pizza of the chest. <laughs> I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna try it out. I'm definitely gonna try it out because I love pizza. I still haven't tried it out either. I live what? in the sticks out here in Woodstock. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> you know where Woodstock is, Pete? <laughs> yes, I know where yeah. Woodstock is. Yeah, You're I mean, to Boston. <laughs> I usually don't get too far uh, down past uh, 
you know, Hartford area, you know, where Rentschler Field is. That's the farthest I usually go. So, <laughs> well, they got a Pepe's in Manchester. I mean, you could take yourself there. Oh yeah, I've seen that. I was like, oh, I have to try it. And then I always say I'll have to try it, and I never, I never made it. <laughs> Manchester is about thirty minutes from stores, a lot closer to you. So if you want to try that kind of style of pizza out, you can go and try it over there. So, so awesome. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Anybody have any final thoughts or? Uh... I think you're going to be a good fit, Ali. Uh, Thank you. I'll just say, you know, if you're one of my players going into UConn, just keep having the mentality you have when you go in there. Just try to kick ass. Don't take any names. Don't worry about making friends right away. Mm -hmm. You know, just go in there, you know, to prove yourself and establish yourself as, as a player, uh, earn your respect. You know, the mm -hmm. friends will come along the way. Uh, just yeah, keep yes, working sir, hard sir. and trust, trust your coaching and, you know, you're going to do well. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. I want to thank you guys so much for, for coming on the show today. Uh, thank you, Pete. Thank you, Oliver. Uh, I can't wait to uh, have you guys on more shows, and uh, um, you you guys can follow this uh, po this podcast at uh, on YouTube, um, and it's the Dog Pound Podcast. Like and subscribe. Uh, so, Pete, uh, where can the followers follow you on X? You can find me at X at P. My first initial, Kalen C A L I N thirty three. P Kalen thirty three. How about you, Oliver? Lundberg Coleman. That's, awesome. That's my name. Sweet. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys so much. And uh, I hope everybody has a good night. <laughs>